Hello and welcome to the webinar on managing bad stink bugs with good stink bugs by Young Park of West Virginia University. My name is Alice Formiga and I'm the webinar coordinator for eOrganic. eOrganic is the Organic Agriculture Community of Practice with eExtension. You can find all of our published articles, videos, and our many upcoming and recorded webinars on organic farming and research topics on our website at extension.org slash organic underscore production. A PDF handout of the slides for this webinar is also available. Um, before we begin, I'd like to give you a very quick rundown on how today's webinar will work. The presentation will last um, approximately 45 minutes, and after that, we'll be showing a very quick um, video of a stink bug, a spine shoulder bug, actually, in action. And um, then we'll have an additional 30 minutes at the end for your questions. We'll be reading the questions out loud after the presentation is over, and we'll answer as many as we have time for. So today, um, we are hosting our second webinar on the topic of organic management of brown marmorated stink bugs, and um, we would like to welcome Dr. Park. He is an associate professor in the entomology program at West Virginia University, and his research team has been working on a statewide brown marmorated stink bug and natural enemy survey, organic stink bug management, and mass rearing of the spine soldier bug. So um, with that, I'm going to hand things over to Young Lot Park. So you should now have the screen control. Okay, Th thanks Alice. I have a topic for today's actual webinar, is, which is managing bad stink bugs with good stink bugs. So which means there are some stink bugs are good actually in uh, our cropping system. That's what I'm gonna talk about. It. So uh, in the next 40, to 45 minutes, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, stink bugs. So basically some plant feeding stink bugs and predatory stink bugs. And uh, I will talk about how to use actually good stink bugs to control bad stink bugs. And then surely there are some obstacles to overcome to use these good stink bugs, uh, bugs wisely. So I'm going to talk about that. Okay, and at the end, I, re I will have a uh, short video clips that shows how this insect system works. Okay, here we go. Okay, stink bugs. Uh, stink bug is also called a shield, shield bug. It looks like a shield, right? And the true bug, and this is actually true bugs. And it gives out a stinky smell. That's why we call it stink bug. And some people actually can't smell. That's very interesting. But anyway, uh, most people smell like uh, stinky uh, from when they touch these insects, when they, when we disturb these insects. So all the stink bugs has a common feature, which is actually the wings and mouth part. So if you look at this picture, on the right, this is actually a green stink bug, and they have a four wings. And if you look at two four wings. The half of the forewing from the base is kind of hardened, and the other half is membrane. This type of wing is called hem elytra. So all the stink bugs has this kind of hem elytra wings. Okay. If you flip over this uh, this insects, now you see the uh, mouth part. So this is actually on the left uh, picture. Uh, you see head part and upside down again, and you see like a straw like structure, that's actually their mouth part. They use this actually mouth part to pierce the plant tissue and then suck the saps. That's how they damage the plants. Okay. And this is a, this, these are some exotic stink bugs from uh, New Guinea. And do you know actually uh, there are some stink bugs that are edible? If you actually Google, or you know, search on the internet, typing edible stink bug, and then you can find some information. And in Indonesia, oops. okay, in Indonesia, uh, they use stink bugs to change change the quality of the tea plants. So basically, uh, some tea plants has kind of some stringent uh, like a taste, but when they put the stink bugs. And they, when the stink bugs feed on the teas, and then they get rid of the stringent. Uh, Muted. So in some in some countries, they use stink bugs in a good way. Okay, if you want to know 
about some string bugs in the United States. This is a very good field guide. I hope you download this PDF from a Virginia Tech website, and you can find uh, the list of bad string bugs and good string bugs. Okay, so this is my short introduction about the string bug. Here we go. This is uh, from this picture is from our museum, insect museum, and. Can you find good stink bugs from this picture? It looks like uh, similar, right? Okay, that's the kind of uh, one problem we have. So, for example, if you cannot see any good stink bugs here, you are not you are more likely to spray some pesticide or try to kill them on your farm, right? When you do that, you kill good ones. Vice versa, if you cannot find bad stink bugs here, you are gonna protect them, right? Including bad stink bugs. So identification is very important uh, in this actual stink bug family because there are some good stink bugs. You may not know about it. So hopefully by the end of this webinar, you learn how to identify good ones out of the bad ones so that you can protect the good ones on your farm and you can get rid of bad ones out of your farm. So here we go. This actually, the stink bug belongs to the family Pentatomidae in taxonomy. So it's what we call the stink bug family. And most of stink bug family, uh, sorry, the most of subfamily of stink bug family are bad ones. They are actually plant eater. But there's a one subfamily, one group of uh, stink bug is actually a good one. We call it Aesopini. That's a subfamily, Aesopini. The stink bugs belong to this subfamily. They are predator, which means they eat other insects. Okay, so, but still they give out stinky smell. So it's a still stink bug, but generally it's a predatory stink bug. So how to identify? This is very important and tricky things. Okay, because uh, both uh, give out the stinky smell, so it is hard to tell which one is good and bad. There are some differences, although, but it is hard, generally hard to tell. If you flip over the insects, okay, and then look at the mouth part. So the left is plant feeder and right is predator. Can you see the difference? So let's see. If you look at the, the top of the mouth part, plant feeder has very narrow uh, starting point. The predator has a big starting point, okay? And next one is, if you look at the plant feeder, there is a structure called the buckley. Okay, one more time. So that structure, like a, like a pouch things, that's called the buckley. But plant feeder has it, and predator doesn't have it. And also, if you look at the, the straw, like a moth part, we call it the proboscis, okay? If you look at it, and then predator one is kind of stouter, so that's how we distinguish. So uh, if you, it, sometimes when these stink bugs fly around, it is very hard to tell which one is good and which one is bad one. Even they land, it is very hard to tell. So the best way is you have to catch it and then you flip over and then try to look at the mouth part. If you can't do that, then you may send this specimen to your extension agent or university uh, and then get identified. I think that may be the, the best way. Okay. So this is actually the one of the predatory stink bug. It's called Perdicus mecleventris. The common name is spined soldier bug. So we don't say stink bug, we call it the soldier bug because they fight against uh, other insects. If you look at this insect's mouth part again, uh, they're actually the first segment of mouth part, mouth part is kind of flexible, which means this mouse part can go forward so that they can hunt other insects. The plant feeding insects, they can't do that. The mouse part goes backward or just uh, straight down to the, from the head, not going forward. So that's the biggest difference. So what kind of actually uh, predatory stink bugs are around? Uh, there are a lot of uh, stink, uh, uh, predatory stink bugs uh, in the United States. Again, if you go back to the, uh, the field guide published by uh, Virginia Tech Extension, and you can see the entire list. 
Okay, uh, in generally what we see in West Virginia where I am is two spotty stink bug on the left, an anchor stink bug in the middle, and spined soldier bugs on the right. In the cropping system, okay, again, in the cropping system, the spined soldier bug is the most abundant predatory stink bugs, specifically in Florida and eastern and you know North Carolina and West Virginia and even Ontario. Okay, so so that's why spined soldier bug has been well studied and well documented compared to other stink bugs. Okay, now let's talk about one bad uh, stink bug. That's our my uh, study insects. One of my study insects. It's called the brown marmorated stink bug. I hope you heard about this insect at least one time. If you need more information about this, uh, you can go to the website stopbmsb.org. That's on the right corner bottom of the slide stopbmsb.org and you can find a lot of information. Even you don't have these insects in your area but you have other stink bugs, still I, you can still go there and learn a lot about stink bugs. Okay. So this insect is from Asia and when this insect hatch they kind of get together and then they hatch and become a f f first instar and then move to the second third, fourth, and fifth instar, and they become others. Okay, at the moment it means marble, marble, okay, so there we go. Okay, uh, there was a webinar about this insect uh, last year. It's, it's an e-organic, e so this is the information, so if you want to know, learn about the best thing for part, I think this is a good webinar. You may uh, need to go back to listen of you know, listen to the recorded uh, webinar. Okay, so this insect uh, was found in late 1990s uh, in Allentown, Pennsylvania for the first time in the United States. Unfortunately, that area was the number two apple production uh, in the United States. So it was uh, recorded as ornamental or uh, household pest because they come to the house for overwintering and then people touch them and try to get rid of them and they, they give out stinky smells and they don't like it, right? So that has been a problem but uh, in 2000s they dispersed to agricultural production areas including orchard. So that's the actual starting point of uh, economic damage has been reported. And then, unfortunately, the Washington uh, states, which is the uh, number one apple production area in the United States, they already have it, unfortunately. So this is actually current uh, distribution of brown mammary stink bug, or BMSB, uh, in the United States. The red color means it's a, like a severe agriculture problem has been reported. So if you look at it, it's more likely uh, the mid-Atlantic states, Pennsylvania, Maryland, West Virginia, Virginia, Delaware, and New Jersey. And then <clears throat> orange colored states, including Washington, is actually uh, the area where agriculture and nuisance problem has been reported. Okay, so, so how they get there? Because uh, they have uh, two important characteristics. Here we go. <coughs> Excuse me. So two important characteristics of brown mammary stink bug is, is there are there and the one of them is they're highly mobile. So basically they can fly five kilometers per day, which is uh, about two to three miles per day. And even nymphs, which they don't have a wing, which don't have wing, but they still can walk like a ten feet per thirty minutes. And then they are amazing hitchhiker. They use railroad and they know how to ride a train and you know vehicles so that they can travel around and then disperse around uh, the United States. So this is actually a major U.S. highway system, and again, again they use vehicles, semi trucks, and trains. Okay. So this is actually one of the uh, rest area 
um, highway in West Virginia. If you visit it, if you look at it, all the white uh, black dots on the building is the Brahmama stink bug. If you look at inside, there's so many. I mean, you know, one time we counted one building and we counted about 9,500 in one day. So it is, it is amazing. And on the, in, in, on the farm, actually, sometimes, you know, farm workers hang their coat and they like it for overwintering site. You know? So they come and, you know, gather and try to overwinter in there. It's a very common problem in, in West Virginia, which is a hot spot for brown mama stink bugs these days. Okay, the second actually important characteristic is their host range. They can feed and sustain on more than 200 plants. Okay, unfortunately, those plants include fruits, vegetables, field crops, herbs, ornamentals, and even trees. So that is the problem. Okay, this is some of the fruit damage uh, you can see. If you look at the, <clears throat> the apple, they make like a corky area under the skin. And these are kind of common, uh, the damage. And uh, sometimes it causes secondary infection of uh, pathogens because they puncture the tissue. So it's like colotetricum, that kind of fungus comes and then make a secondary infection and the fruits unmarketable, make fruits unmarketable. And from our study in West Virginia, we found that they like, like a sweeter variety of peppers and we did some tomato taste test with the student and student reported that uh, the damaged tomato more like a sour and corky so they didn't like it so that has been kind of uh, reported and found okay what do we do with uh, PMS management these days we are heavily reliant on insecticide the problem is it's not always successful because they easily reinfest the farm from outside of the treated area, right? And some recover from some insecticide, so specifically pyrethroid or pyrethrum. Uh, like a, when grower apply pesticide, they knock down to the ground. So it looks like they dead, but it is not in a clear cut. One to two days later, they kind of wake up. It's a small portion, but still they wake up. So that that has been a kind of problem. Other methods are being developed, <coughs> including biological control. We have a couple, uh, couple of species of the parasitic wasp that attacks the eggs uh, from you know we imported from China, and I hope they kind of are available for growers in in the near future and actually the aggregation pheromones have been, have been has been identified by USDA folks so it has been used for monitoring and trap crops and other cultural control methods have been studied we don't have actually result yet but we are doing some experiment and research and uh, using trap crops to reduce the sting bugs damage Okay, so today's talk is about biological control of PMSV, okay, using spined soldier blood. Okay, here we go, one more time. Growers or everybody should know how to distinguish good one from bad one, okay? So I'm just reiterating. So left is brown mammary stink bug and right is spined soldier bug, which is a predator. So how to distinguish? If you look, uh, if you look at the antenna, the brown mammary stink bug has a white band. Okay, if you look at the shoulder, the spined soldier bug is more spiny, okay, pointy, right? If you look at the tip of the, the wing, the spined soldier bug has black markings. It's very distinctive. Okay, one more time. If you look at the tip of the abdomen, there is actually black marking. So right now it looks like a rabbit, but some, something like that. There is a marking, so that's actually a good uh, indication. 
if you, you can catch it, you catch it, again, flip over, look at the mouth part, right? And then you can tell uh, which one is predator, which one is not. Okay, so this is a spined soldier bug, actually uh, the photo from the side. So the round one is eye, and this is their mouth part. Okay, this mouth part can go forward. And this is actually upside down. This is the tip of their mouth part. If you look at it, there is a slit in the middle of the, the straw-like structure. Okay, so actual mouth part is inside that that uh, structure, okay? It's called a stylet. So they use black stylet to feed or imbibe uh, the preys, preys, which basically feed them preys, okay? Feed them prey. So this is the tip of the mouth part. So this is how it works, okay? So can you see two uh, spined soldier bug? Look at their mouth part. Their mouth part goes forward and then sticking to the prey, which is actually the pupa of the beetle. And then what this stink bug does is inside that structure, there is a stylet, and stylet goes actually to the, the pupa, in this case, of the beater, and then feed on. Okay, that's how they uh, hunt and kill the prey. There we go. One more time. If you look at the spine, the soldier bug, at the tip of the wing, there is a black marking. It's very distinctive. Okay, spider soldier bug has a very similar life state life cycle like a brown mammary stink bug. So they hatch from egg and they become a first instar on the right. Okay, they don't feed. So as a first instar, they don't feed, they just hang around and they molt and become a second instar. Okay? And then they molt one more time and third instar and fourth instar and fifth instar. When they become fifth instar, now they have a wing pad. Can you see one pair of black wing pad here? So that's how we distinguish the fifth instar. Now we know they are ready to become adults. And then they become adults after morting. Okay, and then those actually the adults mate and lay eggs in cluster, just like a brown mammary sting box. Okay. The good thing for this spinal soldier bug in terms of managing a uh, bad stink bug, specifically BMSV, is their life cycle perfectly matches. So even uh, when B BMSV goes for overwintering, and this spinal soldier bug also goes to overwintering. Okay? But the, the overwintering sites are different. BMSV goes to the structural house, and this soldier bug goes to the lip leader. They overwinter under leaf leaders. Okay. So this is actually their uh, spine the soldier bug eggs. You may see this one on the farm. Okay. So how to distinguish from bad stink bug eggs and good stink bug eggs? If you look at the top of the eggs, and then spine soldier bug egg has a spine. Ah, that's interesting, right? They have actually this kind of thread. But other stink bug generally don't have that kind of structure. So it's quite easy to identify. But it's small, so without some magnifier, it may be hard to see. Okay. Egg hatches and become uh, first instar. So this is actually young nymphs. Uh, this is how we uh, mass rear them. Uh, we start from the like a small uh, cup. And when they become uh, older and bigger, we move to cage. Okay, so here we go. So upper one is first instar, just hatched from egg, and the bottom one is the second instar. And the middle one looks like, looks like uh, the orange color or red color. That's the insect that just molted from the first instar. Okay, but uh, one more time, the first instar does not feed. And the second instar start to feed on other insects. When they mort, they become a third instar, and this is actually a third instar spine the soldier bug. If you look at it, uh, they like a group feeding. They hunt and then they feed uh, together. If you look at their mouth part, again, their mouth part go forward. And fourth instar is bigger, okay, and then they're eating mealworm. We use mealworm 
as uh, actually the food for mass rearing uh, this soldier bugs. And this is right is fifth instar and left is, is adults. Again, if you look at the fifth instar, they have a wing pad, so which means they are ready to become adults. Okay, uh, left is uh, the the male uh, adults and right is a female. So female has kind of more slit in the middle so that she can lay eggs. Okay, so this is how we distinguish male and female. Okay, spined soldier bugs are known as a caterpillar eater. So they love caterpillars. So that's why they are in high number in the forest, specifically deciduous forest like, um, like oak trees. Okay, and they can eat 75 different insect pests in many uh, agricultural systems. So which means they are generalist. So they don't uh, hunt specific species, uh, but they can hunt everything and they can eat everything. However, they prefer caterpillars. Okay, what they do is this insect grab the caterpillar and then go in, in, the, in the higher uh, area and then they feed. It's like a, a leopard, right? The leopard hunt prey and then grab it and and climb up to the tree, right? And then eat it. And they, they do it similar way. Okay, this is actually the spine the soldier bug. This is actually about a uh, third instar and feeding on brown marmor sting bug eggs. Okay, what you see here is this is a mouth part again and they poke. Okay, and then they feed on and this is actually the eggs already fed. This is how actually the soldier bug feeding on brown mom and sting bug eggs. And we'll have a video clip for this later. Okay, four star is feeding eggs. Okay, this is very interesting. Uh, this insect is very uh, curious, curious. So in this picture, what you see is one insect come to the uh, brown mom and sting bug eggs and then examine it first and then taste it first and then they do sustained feeding which means one to two minutes and then the eggs kind of collapse and then they kill it. So one actually stink bug, this is a force insta uh, soldier bugs and they can like eat about 10 in an hour easily. Okay? 10 eggs per hour. Uh, this is actually the what you see here on the right is the brown mammary stink bug just hatching from the eggs. And this soldier bug does not care. They just go and feeding on just nearly emer newly emerged stink bugs. Okay. Here we go. This is actually the close shot. And what you see here is here is antenna, right? And this is a, a eye, and this is their mouth part. Can you see in the middle there's a, a line? That's the stylet. So basically, this part, uh, using this part, the blood, hemolymph, or anything that the prey has going into this structure, and they actually uh, feed. That's how it works. Okay, uh, this is a dirt soldier bug, and then grabbed the first insta brown mammal stink bug. Again, this this insect just like a leopard, right? They just grab it and then move around and then hide and then they feed, right? And this is how the uh, the adults soldier bug handling handle the uh, stink bugs. Uh, they kind of roll it. We'll see this one at the end uh, with the video. Okay, how about second instar uh, BMSB? Second instar brown mammal stink bug is a little bit bigger but uh, it's a small enough for the soldier bugs can handle. So after feeding, this is uh, how it works. The, on the right is the intact, which is an unfed uh, PMSB. The left is the fed by uh, soldier bugs. It's kind of body kind of shrinks and then die. 
okay, this is actually fifth instar uh, VMSB, and fifth instar is big enough, right? The surge bug cannot handle very well, but still, surge bug is aggressive enough, and they attack it, and they attack and on the top or side or bottom, and then eventually, what what surge bug does is like uh, paralyze them, and then like, lift up, and then make upside down and then keep feeding. Okay, that's how surgery bug attack and feed the the bigger BMSV names. Okay, so on the left is fed by uh, surgery bugs, a kind of body shrunk to shrink to again, right? And the right is uh, unfed. So it's quite different. Okay. How about surgery bug feeding on BMSV adults? Unfortunately, the BMSV adults is bigger than surgery bug. And then BMSV adult is so strong. It's a strong flyer and good walker and stop body and then heavier. So surgery bug is not doing very well killing uh, adults. Definitely surgery bug attacks BMSV adults. However, we never seen any soldier virus can kill, effectively kill BMSV adults. So it may not work for BMSV adults control. Okay, so right now it has a mouse part going forward and then try to attack. Okay, so we did some study about the soldier bugs. So which instar or which stage of soldier bug is the best to f kill other insects? Okay, based on our study, so this is actually called uh, feeding equivalency. So basically, the second instar uh, soldier bug, the amount of feeding that second instar soldier bugs uh, do, we set as a one. Okay, and then fifth instar is 9.5, which means fifth instar nymphs can feed 9.45 times more than second instar. So if you look at this, the second and third instar is not feeding much compared to fourth, fifth, and adults. Specifically, fifth instar uh, soldier bug feed the most. So it's most aggressive, uh, the stage. Okay, we also did some pesticide tests. This is actually one, just one set of pesticide tests. If you need more information, please send me an uh, email and uh, we'll, I'll provide uh, more. So basically, uh, we used the Azera, which is a, uh, it's a pyogenic, which is a pyrethrum, and Azera, which means pyrethrum plus some uh, growth regulator. And if you look at it, higher uh, concentration definitely uh, provide more mortality uh, against uh, soldier bug. Right, so which means uh, some of the organic pesticide may not good for soldier bugs, okay? Especially uh, when we apply Azera, one more time, which has a uh, pyrethrum plus uh, growth regulator. Uh, if you look at control, which means no pesticide, no Azera, no pesticide, the female lay eggs as a cluster like this. But once actually the soldier bugs get azera, the female lay eggs scattered. So actually the pesticide changed the, the soldier bug's egg laying behavior. However, we watched how these eggs hatch and then grow, and they grow, they hatch normally, and they grow normally. So even though the azera changed the soldier bug's, bug's egg laying behavior, but after that, the, hatch, the newly hatched insect from the eggs are still normal. Okay. okay, now actually, this is a quick question. Can soldier bug kill VMSV? Actually, the answer is yes. Okay, how about, okay. We have other studies published in 2002, okay. The spined soldier bugs can kill sudden green stink bugs. So there is actually a report about 13 years ago. Okay, can soldier bugs effectively control BMSV? The answer is very limited, 
because storage box cannot kill alert BMSB. Okay. Can storage box be a key solution for BMSB control in organic, specifically an organic farm? The answer is maybe not, because we have uh, two hurdles we need to overcome. Okay. The first hurdle is this soldier bug is pretty expensive and it's not readily available. So if you go to the website, this is the amount. So 50 large nymphs or adults are 143 bucks. Oh man, it's almost three dollars for insects, even though they say free shipping in 48 United States. But uh, it's very expensive. And again, you have to know that this is a generalist predator. If you, if you release them, it's not guaranteed that they will control BMSV, okay? Because they can eat other things. It's pretty expensive. So uh, what we have been doing at West Virginia University, we tried to develop mass rearing system. And we did some studies. I'll go very quickly about this data. So we put this insect in different temperature to find out which temperature gives the best output in terms of short uh, development time and then the highest survivor, okay? So, so we used some, we call the biophysical models. So we have a survivorship, development, develop, distribution, rate of development, and we put all of these, uh, the equation together, so we simulate it. If you wanna know about details about this, here is actually the citation we published uh, last year. And then this is the result. Okay, here we go. Uh, if you look at egg to adults, I highlight it in, uh, with a red box, and the temperature between 20, about 21 to 27 is the best in terms of survivorship, okay? And in terms of development, this is a developmental rate, which means the higher, the faster, okay? So here we go. 31, almost 31 degrees Celsius gives the like a fastest development. So we put this all the data together and simulate it, and this is what we found. 24.5 degrees Celsius provide the highest survivorship, and 30.6 degrees Celsius provide for the fastest development. So between 25 and 30, that's the optimum temperature that we can get the fastest development of the sting, uh, uh, soldier bugs as well as highest survivorship. So that's actually the temperature we found for mesuree. Okay, the second obstacle is this. Is, sting, is this sting bug, um, is this soldier bug going to kill BMSV in, on the farm or in the cropping system? That was the question. So we did this choice test. So we put Colorado potato beater and cabbage worm, which is a smooth body, and then four wet worm, which is a hairy body, and BMSV together in an arena. And then we introduced the different stage of uh, soldier bugs to see which, which one they like and which one they try to attack first, which one they uh, do sustain, sustained feeding to kill. And what we found was they liked smooth-bodied caterpillar, which is cabbage worm here. And second is the Colorado potato beater, which is a, it's a beater, but it's a smooth, uh, I'm talking about the, uh, the larva stage, it's a smooth. And they attack uh, for wet worm, which is kind of hairy, but still, you know, still they attack it. But they never attack BMSV when these other insects uh, the present. So that may be a problem. So we try to overcome this obstacle, okay? Because uh, one more time, the BMSV is not going to come specifically to kill BMSV, right? So we have to make them come. So the good idea, uh, good use is aggregation pheromone of this soldier bugs already identified and these are commercially available, so you can buy it. So basically, if you put this aggregation pheromone and then you can attract them in one area from other area. 
Okay, we did some uh, study to see how far this pheromone works. So this is our sample layout, and in the middle we put the pheromone traps with the soldier bug pheromone, and we put uh, we release uh, insects in each of these cross area in eight different directions. Okay, and then we set them for a week, and then we recaptured, we marked and recaptured. Uh, the insects, and this is what we found. Up to 25 meters from the trap, we have about 20 to 30 percent recapture rate. But after 50 meter, we have a less than like a 3 percent. So, but still, the aggregation of pheromone kind of works in short range. So, we did additional study on uh, West Virginia organic farm. And this is an apple orchard in organic farm. This is about 0 0.5 uh, acre. And we divide the uh, apple orchard into two. And upper part, we didn't do anything. But lower part, we put four pheromone dispensers. And then we visit individual apple trees and beat it and counted a catch and counted all the uh, soldier bugs. Okay. There we go. And then we release back at the same location. And uh, June 25th, if you look at it, the darker color means higher number. Let me go back. OK, this is our sample layout. OK, uh, the yellow one is pheromone trap. And then the color, the darker color indicate more soldier bugs were found. So first week, we released. Uh, the, there's not much difference. But two weeks later, you see a lot of soldier bugs moving to the lower part, which, which has like uh, pheromone traps, right? And 21st, about another two weeks later, we see the same pattern. Now we did the same study again uh, using nine pheromone traps this time in bigger area. This is about an acre. And the color, one more time, the darker color means more PMS we were uh, sorry, soldier bugs were found. And about after two weeks, you see darker color on the lower part where the pheromone traps were uh, uh, placed. And then it kept like a pattern until the fifth, fifth, five weeks after pheromone trap placement. So this means we may be able to relocate soldier bugs from one area to another. And we may be able to. Uh, attract soldier bugs from somewhere to the trees where PMSVs are located. Okay, that is the kind of idea. We are still working on it. So this is kind of take-home message. Uh, okay, the most important thing, correct identification is very important. If you see this insect as a just stink bug, more likely you want to get rid of them, right? If you do that, you are get, re get you are getting rid of Okay, good stink bugs. So, so one more time, how to identify spine soldier bug? The shoulder is very pointy, very spiny, and then tip of the wing has a black marking. Okay, and if you upside down, and if you look at the mouth part, there should be like a stouter, right? And then the mouth part can go forward. That's how we identify good stink bugs, specifically for spine soldier bugs. Okay, and you have to know that this is generally spreader. Buying these insects and they're releasing does not mean it, they will do their job because you have a specific pest. They may not may not like your specific pest. Okay, so to do that, we have to again, uh, we have to do something else like using aggregation pheromones of soldier bugs to relocate. Okay, that kind of things. One more time. Spinal soldier bugs cannot kill VMSV adults. It works only for immature stage. Okay, again, to do that, we can actually do maybe attracting soldier bugs using pheromones. Okay. One thing you have to know that is this insect is susceptible to pesticides, just like a brown mammary stink bug. Okay, so and sometimes they can recover just like brown mammary stink bug. So, so. We need to be very careful about using pesticide if you have these insects on your farm. Okay, 
Well, this was study was funded by USDA uh, OREI and West Virginia Specialty Crop Black Grants and then State Horticultural Association of Pennsylvania. I appreciate it. Unmuted. Funding sources. Okay, now this is my my last slide. Uh, can you see this uh, slide and is it good or bad, Stingfer? I hope you're right. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we're going to quickly show your video as well here. You can tell us what's going on in the video. Yeah, this is a force instar spined soldier bugs. And then the eggs are like BMS BX, brown mammary stink bug eggs. And what this insect does is now actually the, okay, the, the, their mouth part is engaged to the eggs. It's kind of attached. And again, inside the mouth part, there's a stylet. That one is going into the eggs and then sucking the, the contents of eggs. And then later, this egg will be like a, like a shrink. And this is actually how uh, the, the soldier box eating just newly hatched uh, BMSB. If you look in the middle like this, that's the actual place where the the contents of this uh, stink bug get into. Okay, they suck the, in this case, hemolin. This is how uh, adults, the soldier bug, handle the brown mammary stink bug. So basically, they lift up and then they can turn. Okay, this is how adults, uh, soldier bugs, uh, now it's cat caught uh, a First, it's the BMSV and they're moving around. They, he needs to go hide somewhere and to feed. Okay. Okay. And again, you know, this handling uh, the BMSV. It's because they have a stylet, they can move around the prey. Okay. Yeah. This poor stink bug. Okay, this is second instar of uh, VMSV fed by the soldier bug. And it, it's not underground, it's kind of already lifted and then like moving around. Okay, so eggs, first and second instar VMSV can be easily killed by the, the soldier bug. Again, this is, okay, this is a stylet. Can you see? This is, now it's separate. So that goes inside this structure and then feed them. Yours, you can see some movement of the stylet. Okay, this is actually the uh, soldier works attacking uh, fifth instar VMSV. It's already actually attacked so many times, so this VMSV is not functioning right. But right now, actually, the mouse part is underneath of uh, stink bug, and then she lift up and flip over the stink bug, uh, the brown mammary stink bugs, and then now feeding on here. Like the mouse part goes like a, just behind the leg. Okay. I think this is okay. it. Okay. Oh, let's see. Okay, it's still going. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is it still going on? Well, let's see. Oh, um, no. <laughs> okay. That's oh, okay. <laughs> so, okay. Um, yeah. All right. That's... I hope everybody was able to see that because um, I know sometimes over the web it's a little tricky to show these videos like this. Um, but um, anyway, good. Yeah, somebody did see it. That's reassuring here. Um, I just wanted to say that we're about to begin our question and answer session. And so for anybody who missed the very beginning of the presentation, um, you can um, type questions into your question box and hit return. And if you don't see the question box, you can just click the small plus sign um, on your control panel or a little triangle next to the word question, and that will open it up. Um, I also wanted to mention that we really value your feedback, so we'd very much appreciate it if you could fill out our follow-up survey, which you'll be receiving in an email later today. And this webinar is being recorded, so if you want to watch it again um, or share it with others, um, we'll be putting it um, in our webinar archive, um, the link to which is right at the top of the page here, um, and then the 
more direct link is the second link on the page. And if you have general questions about organic farming um, that you didn't get answered in this webinar, um, please feel free to use the e-extension Ask an Expert service, and um, that may help you find an answer. So um, we have quite a few questions coming in here. Um, okay, somebody said the video lagged a bit, um, so sorry about that. We may be able to post a video as well. Um, we'll definitely look into that, and then it might be easier to watch it um, from your own computer if it didn't work that well. Um, let's see. Okay, so what is the pheromone that you use to attract the um, spine soldier? Okay. Uh, the pheromone is actually, uh, okay, the spine disorder of pheromone has about five to six uh, different compounds. Okay. Uh, the commercially available one has a E2 hexanel. That's the actual major components. And I don't know exactly what uh, other uh, components are in the products because I, I asked them and they didn't disclose it. But but uh, it, it has been commercially available. Uh, major component is E2 hexanel, actually. OK. Um, someone want to know whether the soldier bug is also cannibalistic. Yes, actually. Uh, it, that's one of the biggest problems when we developed a uh, mass rearing system, because they are cannibalistic. That's why uh, we, OK, uh, when we rear them uh, up to third instar, we use cup because they really like to get together. And then it reduces, actually, the cannibalism. But when we mix with those younger instars with the, like older nymphs or adults, they eat each other. So that's why we have a two separate system. When they become a fourth and fifth instar, specifically fifth instar, we put in the cage. And then they get along with the adults very well. And the, to avoid, actually, cannibalism, one thing we can do is we provide a lot of water uh, in a dental week, basically the, the cotton ball, and then uh, generally we avoid the lots of cannibalism. Right. Uh, one of the most important thing is egg cannibalism. They eat at their own eggs. So uh, whenever they lay eggs, we have to harvest, okay, put in uh, different cups. That's the most important part in mess really. Okay, um, we have a couple questions coming in about how many um, stink bugs are killed. So I think, um, okay, well, one is what is the ratio of kill for each soldier bug? And then someone else wanted to know how many eggs and nymphs does a soldier bug feed during its lifespan? So um, do you have some oh, okay. estimated totals there? Right, right. Uh, those experiments are coming as a uh, publication in, in, in very, very soon. But uh, roughly summarize, actually, uh, the younger instar can kill only one egg per day. I'm talking about second instar or, you know, second instar, the soldier bug can kill only one or two maximum. But if you, we are talking about fifth instar, they can kill about entire egg mass in like five, six hours. We, it does not need one day depending on how hungry they are. When, it, when we do the experiment, we starve them for 24 hours. Uh, for like a fair comparison with the other replicate, replicates. So, uh, so if we let them uh, starve for one day and give them, give the egg mass, which has about, about 20 uh, egg, eggs in a mass of BMSV, and then they can kill like a, it's in five hours they can kill everything that's kind of rough but the detailed information again it will be published soon so okay. or I can provide more information if you send me an email okay um, what is the overwintering capability of the soldier bug <clears throat> that's a really good question actually uh, we still don't know exactly where they overwinter. We know they overwinter under lip litter. That's for sure. Because when we search for uh, overwintering uh, soldier bugs, we found fairly a um, fair amount of uh, soldier bugs under the lip litter. But uh, based on uh, literature, they can overwinter under the bark or under the rock or even under the log. So. We still don't know exactly how, 
how well they overwinter, but we did actually uh, the mark and recapture study. We marked uh, in the fall and then we recaptured in the spring. The recapture rate was about 2%. So that does not mean actually they, how well they overwinter, but that's the rate we capture. So I hope that this can be an answer for your question. Okay. Um, let's see. Does the BMSB nymph look different than the spine soldier bug nymph? First, okay. For the first instar, it is very hard to distinguish. But if you look at mouth part, yes, you can distinguish because uh, the B, uh, BMSB uh, first instar mouth part is kind of skinny, but soldier bug mouth part is kind of stout, very stout, so it's very easy to distinguish. But if you look from the top, not only st uh, soldier bug versus BMSV, if you look at any other, not any other, most of stink bugs, the first instar looks very similar. Right, but if, if you go to second instar, it, they become kind of differentiate uh, in terms of uh, markings and you know size and shapes. Okay, um, do soldier bugs stink when they're squashed, um, like stink bugs? Yeah. 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 So, no, no, soldier bug is a stink bug. Okay. Right, so they stink. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but this is an interesting thing. Uh, it's a younger stage, younger, I'm talking younger stage of soldier bugs, they smell like uh, apple cider. Apple, apple cider. cider. Oh, yeah. Okay. Many people said that, <laughs> but adults just like us, other stink bugs. And if you smell the aggregation pheromone, it looks like apple. Yeah. So, uh, but it depending on people. Other people say it differently. But when I smell it, it looks like apple cider. It's it's, it's different. Uh, the it's the the smell of stinks are different in different you know in stages. Like in the first stage, it's more like a pleasant, and other stage of Soldier bug is kind of stinky. Okay, um, here's a question. Since the pheromone is no longer commercially available, how can a grower get enough spine soldier bugs to control the MSB? That's my question too, actually. Because uh, okay. uh, uh, we this product was available about five years ago. I could buy about 20 packs easily. But these days, it seems actually this product is uh, discontinued. Uh, the the company was it's a Rescue, Rescue, Soldier Bug Rescue. That was Sterling, Sterling INC, yeah. But uh, I asked them, but they said it's discontinued, and I contacted the person who developed this, uh, you know, identified this pheromone, which is uh, a USDA, and uh, they sent me some uh, their own products, but. I don't know if this will be available commercially or not. That's that's another big question. That's another hurdle we have to overcome. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, do the soldier bugs prefer to eat eggs over caterpillars? Oh uh, no, they prefer caterpillars. They prefer so, caterpillars. So this is a predator, which means they likes moving things. Okay. Right. Sometimes if there is a BMSV eggs versus BMSV first insta, they prefer uh, second insta, let's say, and then they prefer second insta because it's moving. Okay, um, so this person would like more information on what other insect pests um, the soldier bugs control. I know you mentioned um, cabbage worms, for example. Right. Uh, any caterpillars mm -hmm. that has like a not long, does not have like a long hairs, they can attack. And again, this is well known for caterpillar eater. Or the caterpillar and smooth uh, larva stage of beater, like a Colorado potato beater. They're really good at those things. And this insect is very, very well known for controlling Colorado potato beater larva. And any other stages of eggs, that's a good thing. And if they are desperate, they hunt adults, all the adults, beaters, and corn, soybean, or whatever. Again, 75 insect pests are listed, wow. you know, for this uh, predator. Okay, so, um, yeah. this person says um, he was told by an organic grower that the grower had crushed stink bugs in a blender, filtered the juice, 
sprayed it on other stink bugs, and he swears that it deterred and even killed the stink bug. Do you know, think there could be any truth to that idea? Okay, okay, well, uh, <laughs> okay, from, from our lab experiment, I, I can talk about a couple of things. Uh, when this soldier bug tried to attack specifically for BMSV adults, they get deterred first because uh, when actually the soldier bugs put their mouth part on BMSV, the B it looks like a BMSV like are emitting the stinky smell, and then so soldier bug bugs like a, like a move backward for a while, but they go back, and then after that, there's no problem. So maybe at the beginning, soldier bug may be deterred, mm -hmm. but once actually they know, it looks like a they're okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Does ambient temperature affect BMSB activity? In other words, are they more active in a warm environment? Oh yes, definitely, definitely. They uh, there's a study about it, and I think uh, there's a threshold temperature so that they don't fly or they don't move, and at certain temperature, I think it's about 15 degrees Celsius and they start to move around, right? But it's, it's so hot, then again, again, they go back to hide, right? Okay, um, so here's some more questions about attracting soldier bugs. Are there any um, host plants, or are there any certain colors um, right. they might prefer, or infrared light, or red light wavelengths, or anything right, like right. that? Right, that's actually, uh, it's a general question for like uh, most uh, generalist predators, not only soldier bugs, but like uh, base wings and you know, fi fire bugs and all of those things. Surely, you know, this insect respond to some of the uh, the we call the refuge planting or you know, attracting uh, attra like, uh, ornamentals that attract. However, uh, it is not well attracted. As long as they don't have a caterpillar or you know, other pest or food they can eat, they come and go. Again, this is a good flyer too. Right. Uh, in terms of color, uh, I don't recall anything has been published or reported, but there are some plants that can attract uh, soldier bugs, which include like uh, sunflowers and those uh, those things. Sunflower has been uh, known as a good attractant, but but again, they come and go. They don't stay. That's the problem. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, in the field, do BMSB and soldier bug populations peak at the same time, and um, what month of the year are they most prevalent? Okay. Actually, they do. Uh, oh, on the slide, I showed, you know, we simulated that their development and those things. And we simulated BMSB as well, and it exactly matched, which means they need same degree day coming, growing degree days coming from the overwintering place, and then same degree days are needed to develop from egg to adult. It's very interesting. They're totally synchronized. So when the actually the, the BMSB picks, actually the soldier bugs population picks too. In West Virginia, it depending on location, but West Virginia, the Morgantown where I am, uh, the BMSB population peaks about uh, July, okay, early July, late July, and that's the time we see a lot of soldier bugs as well. So, at least in our place, it's 100% synchronized. Okay, um, here's somebody who's asking whether you have experience um, in stink bug control with Boberia bassiana or um, Let's see, let's see the other one. Yeah. Mataris, Mataris, right, right. Uh, I, th I think somebody already tried, <laughs> but I cannot recall, but it didn't work very well. I think that was my kind of uh, uh, okay. learning. But uh, Bavaria is a, is a, it's very popular, uh, the fungus that kills the insects, but we never seen any Bovaria infected uh, and then killed the BMSV or even soldier bugs on the farm for 
last seven, eight years. So. Okay. Um, does the pheromone for spine soldier bugs attract BMSB as well? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't hear it. Can you repeat? Um, okay, sure. Yeah. It says, the does the pheromone for spine soldier bug attract BMSB as well? Okay, I, okay, I'm sorry, I, it's kind of echoing. Okay, yeah, maybe that. Can you, repeat, can you repeat one more time? Okay, um, whether the um, pheromone for spine soldier bug oh, also okay. attracts BMSB. Okay, I, okay. No, their aggregation pheromones are different. It's, it's quite different, so uh, they are not attracted. I mean, the pheromone is the chemical that insects use for communication. It's a, it's a species specific. In most cases, and in this case, soldier bugs and BMSB uh, aggregation pheromones are quite different, and they don't attract it, uh, each other. Okay. Um, do you have an idea whether um, spine soldier bug can be used to control cucumber beetles? Yes, actually. Uh, oh, cucumber beetle on which crop? Not sure. If you okay. Wanna... So, okay. Uh, it, when okay, uh, when I actually surveyed uh, BMSB and corn, we saw many uh, uh, like a spine the soldier bugs, and like attacking southern cucumber beetle, which is actually southern corn root fungi, which is a cucumber beetle, spotted cucumber beetle. So adults, I'm talking about adults. So yeah, we saw many times and. I think they can control it, but, but again, uh, if there is other food that is that are suitable for spine the soldier bug, and then they are not going to uh, attack beaters because the beaters are azide and mobile compared to like a caterpillars or any other things. Okay, yeah, he was talking about, right. or she, either one, was talking about um, cucumber. Right. Okay, um, let's see. Um, do you have any information on vertical um, distri distribution of spine soldier bug in larger trees, like 10 to 40 yes. feet, for example? Yeah, yes, we do. Yes, we do. Uh, you know, West Virginia has a 70% of West Virginia is mountain, and we collect actually uh, this spine the soldier bug from the forest, and we bring into the uh, cropping area because. Uh, because we have uh, so many deciduous trees and we have so many caterpillars. Again, this soldier bug is known as caterpillar eater. So when we collect this, actually, the spine the soldier bug, you know, kind of mass amount, like a lot of soldier bugs, we prune the top of the, like a top portion of the oak tree. And we see quite quite number of uh, stink, uh, the soldier bugs. So it seems they prefer like upper part, upper canopy of the trees, hmm. or, uh, compared to uh, lower part. But but we still find the lower part. But the highest number we have gotten so far was always upper part of the canopy. And okay. Um. Let's see. If stink bugs peak in July, um, why do we have so much damage in strawberries which mature in June? Uh, July is in West Virginia. Oh, okay, yeah. So right, but uh, in the warmer, warmer place, it may go all year. Yeah. But. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, are there any beneficial uses for the BMSB? That's that's a good question actually. <laughs> uh, so uh, this insect is from Asia. Okay, and this ins insect. This is okay. The BMSB is not the number one pest in Asian country. This is like a number four or five. Sometimes this is a minor pest in in East, far east and far east Asian countries, like Japan, Korea, and China. So they don't care much about these insects. However, uh, there are some uh, there was some trial about like uh, like a, like a making lipstick. So basically, when you do the, I'm talking about lipstick, cosmetic lipstick. So, because this stink bug smell is so, like, uh, adhesive, so they try to put this one into the lipstick so that when you use lipstick, when you wear a lipstick, lipstick stays longer. 
because because this smell attached to some structure and that goes longer. So th that's what I heard uh, from the for Far East Asian countries how they try to use it. But other than that, uh, I don't think uh, this insect has uh, other good things. Uh, we looked at uh, uh, the Chinese uh, Oriental Medicine book and BMSV is not listed <coughs> in there, which means it's not used for medicine at all. However, if in the Thailand or uh, African countries, they eat, again, you know, stink bugs as a food, but they don't have a BMSV, so. So um, what else keeps BMSV under control in Asia? Uh, in, in Asia? Mm -hmm. that's, that's what we tried to find out, actually. Uh, the biggest thing is they have, a, it's called the bean bug. Bean bug is the number one uh, pest. Like, like a, bean bug is not pen, like a stink bug, but it's very similar to stink bug. And that population is so high, and it looks like this uh, BMS is not competing very well. And also, they may have other natural enemies that we don't have including like some parasitic flies and you know, other other predators. So do you think any of those in insects can be imported? Um? Yes, actually, from China, uh, you, we imported about uh, multiple uh, the parasitic wasps. They are still in the quarantine. They have to check uh, the safety and everything. So I hope they release and then the growers can use those very soon. At least in China, the the parasitic wasp plays a key role in suppressing the population of BMSB. Okay, um, here's a question about um, controlling BMSB. Um, this person used water and soap detergent, and that seems to work well. Um, do you know of any other methods to use, or would you recommend people check out that other webinar? On, uh, uh, yeah, actually, we have a comp uh, the USDA published complete list of pesticides that works okay. against the BMSV. And also, if you check the other webinar, uh, there will be a, there will be uh, more detailed information. Okay, yeah, then that can be found in our archive at the top link on your screen. Um, okay. Uh, if you go to stopbmsv.org. Mm -hmm. There are some information about that. Too. Okay, yeah, I'll just type that into the chat box in a second. Um, let's see. Um, are there baiting compounds or other lures for BMSB? Uh, there are many lures actually being uh, developed by USDA and, and researchers working on uh, stink bugs. And there are lures for color. And there are lures f for like a structure that catch overwintering BMS, uh, BMSB. So before they go to the house, we capture using like a trap. Okay. Also, we have a pheromone traps. And yeah, those are really kind of available. Th there are some vendors selling uh, pheromone and traps, at least. So you can use it. Okay, well, thank you. Um, we are pretty much out of time here. Um, so I'd like to thank everyone um, for asking those questions and also say once again that you can find this and um, many of our other upcoming and archived webinars on organic farming and research topics, uh, many of which are on insect management this year at the link on your screen. So thank you, Dr. Park, for um, presenting your work and showing us all those great um, photos and video. So, and thanks to everyone for joining us. Thank you.